Tonight, a KWWO special report, and we are going to look back on a very dark day across eastern Iowa history. Sunday, May 25th, 2008, late that afternoon, shortly after graduation ceremonies had ended at Appling and Parkersburg High School, a devastating EF5 tornado tracked through portions of Butler and Blackhawk counties, literally changing the lives of thousands. Storm Track 7 meteorologist Kyle Keel takes a look back at the Parkersburg, New Hartford, and Duncanton tornado and the turnaround that these towns have made since then. Right now, Kyle is live for us tonight in Parkersburg with our special report. Kyle. Good evening, Ron and Abby. You know, it was the day before Memorial Day in 2008. It was a very warm and humid day. The threat for severe weather was known, but nobody could have imagined what was going to happen that evening. It would forever change the lives of many in Parkersburg, New Hartford, and Duckerton. It was so loud that uh, my wife was screaming in my ear and I could not hear her. Well, it sounded like a jet engine, like you were standing beside an airplane that was revving up. Couldn't really see anything, but I heard it. I thought, oh my God, that's got to be it. It was around 4.30 Sunday afternoon, May 25th. Strong storms in eastern Iowa. The first few didn't produce any uh, reported tornadoes on the ground, but this last one has now produced two. Strong words from Storm Track 7 meteorologist Eileen Loam. Reports were coming in of a large, destructive tornado south of Applington. The massive storm entered Parkersburg at 4.56 p.m. We will not have any warning other than what we're telling you right now, so you need to take shelter immediately. This is an extremely dangerous situation. We've had reports of damage. We've had reports confirmed at least two tornadoes on the ground. Eileen was on and, and we were watching and she was talking about it and, and kind of the path it was going. Parkersburg Mayor Perry Bernard recalls those moments. I actually saw the tornado coming in but didn't realize that that's what it was because it was so big and it wasn't wedge shape. It was a wall, just a solid black wall. And just a few seconds later, uh, I could see buildings just exploding into pieces and it was sucking things into it. And uh, then I knew at that point, okay, we're, we're in a bad situation here. He scurried to the basement with his wife and two kids. Then the tornado passed directly overhead. Uh, just felt like you were going to explode. The, the, the pressure on your head was just unbelievable. Three quarters of a mile wide with peak wind speeds up to 205 miles per hour, the twister continued east, destroying most of Applington Parkersburg High School. The golf course also took a direct hit. Bernard and his family emerged to find only a bowl of bananas and a camera sitting in what was left of his kitchen. Without thinking, he began snapping photos. It just looked like an atom bomb went off and everything was totally leveled. Trees were gone, houses gone. Within just a matter of a few minutes, the powerful EF5 tornado destroyed more than 300 homes and businesses here in Parkersburg. Seven people were killed with dozens more injured. The destructive tornado showed no signs of letting up as it continued its track east along Highway 57 toward the town of New Hartford. The north side of this small Iowa town took a direct hit from the deadly tornado. Turned on Channel 7 and here's Eileen Lone saying there's a tornado coming down Highway 57. Susan Meyer recalls rushing to the basement with her husband and father. And just as it hit, my husband just took the last step down off the basement steps when it, it just kind of imploded because the glass and everything started flying in at us. Uh, he was cleaning glass out of his ears for months or weeks. <laughs> Meyer and her family found themselves trapped under rubble. It took first responders 45 minutes to find them. I thought it was a war zone. It was. I mean, there was nothing left. Numerous homes were destroyed, along with the Oak Hill Cemetery and the Sinclair Elevator. As the tornado headed into Black Hawk County, it had grown to more than a mile wide. Eileen Lone, I remember, came on and said, if you're in the Duggerton Fairbank area, get to the, get to shelter now. Mel Neal and his wife took Eileen seriously and headed to the basement. He recalls hearing the windows being blown out, the timbers giving way, and his 100-year-old trees being ripped from the ground. Within seconds, it was over. We came upstairs and walked around the house, and we knew there was a lot of, a lot of damage, and we sort of settled on that. But then we walked outside and looked across the road where all of our buildings were down, the silo was gone, the uh, grain bin tops of them were all gone, or about half of them were gone. Mel and his wife decided not to rebuild and moved to Fairbank. Their son, Todd, and his family decided to stay. In fact, their house was finished just over a month ago. 
Many say they were overwhelmed by the response in the days, weeks, months following the disaster. The next few days, we had probably two to three hundred people here helping with the debris, cleaning up, doing things that, uh, that it would have taken us months to do alone. I know the next day we had people coming out wanting building permits to start building right away, um, which was unbelievable. Applington Parkersburg High School reopened just 15 months later. Homes and businesses were rebuilt. In fact, Mayor Bernard says they have more people living in Parkersburg now than they did before. Midwest One Bank, whose security cameras captured the storm's fury, was rebuilt in the same location. Traveling down Highway 57 toward New Hartford, you hit the curve. Ali Fuchwanger grew up here and works at the town's only gas station. She says rebuilding it in 2010 was a step forward in the recovery. We don't have much. We have one restaurant and a bar. You know, there's just nothing here. And so without the curve, there was even less. Even through the rebuild and the passing years, you can still find reminders. I found a bike the other day in, in, the, in the woods when I was hunting for mushrooms. In Dunkerton, steel from grain bins can be seen wrapped around surviving trees. After this tornado turnaround, people tell us they pay more heed to those storm warnings. Anytime there is a storm warming, warning coming up, I respect it, uh, and more than I ever did before. If we hadn't heard Eileen telling us that that tornado was on the way, we wouldn't be here. And that right there is why we are on air anytime there's a severe thunderstorm or tornado warning for any portion of the KWWL viewing area. We'll be on the air tracking the storms and providing that potentially life-saving information. Now, there were also five other tornadoes across eastern Iowa, including an EF3 in Hazleton. You can read more about those tornadoes on our website, kwwl.com. We're live in Parkersburg this evening. I'm meteorologist Kyle Keel, News 7, KWWL. Oh, Kyle, thanks very so much. Out. What a what a day it was, really. It was and amazing. I'm sure you remember it well as well. It was really scary. I mean, you get, you get those images and you get the reports because mm -hmm. when you first issue, the, the warning's issued, you don't know how this storm is going to materialize. Mm -hmm. It'll start, obviously, it starts small, but this one developed very fast, and we knew there was a threat for severe weather. We just obviously, as Kyle mentioned, we didn't know how severe this is going to be. Right. I mean, right. there's only been six of those type tornadoes right. ever in the state of Iowa. So it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it is catastrophic. Yeah, I remember we did went over to do the telethon there the next couple of days, and everything was down that you couldn't even tell where the streets were because the street signs were all gone. You didn't know what street we were on. It was just, it was on that whole south side of town. It was just devastation. Just amazing. And everybody still to that day remembers mm -hmm. where they were. Exactly. So like, you, know, mm -hmm. you know where you were right. when that happens. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, incredible images. Now, the tornado was actually on the ground for an hour and 10 minutes, traveling about 43 miles total. Nine people were killed and 50 were injured. And you know, as it turns out, that was the strongest tornado in Iowa since 1976. There have been no EF5 tornadoes uh, since May 25th of 2008. So hear more about the experience of of those who were able to survive the F5. That's on kwwl.com right now.